Welcome. Firstly, just like to say a huge thanks to all the staff here from Newcastle who have provided Cockle Park Farm as a perfect venue for what we're trying to do today. There has never been a more important time for us to be innovative and creative in developing new ideas and new businesses. It's vital. You will be escorted by four tour guides around the farm to see a whole variety of different exhibits. Some of them indoors, some of them outdoors, uh, live demonstrations, video presentations, all sorts of things. Have fun and I'll see you in four hours. This piece of machinery allows us to go through 100% field of clover and actually strip till into it. But certainly the sorts of data we've been collecting so far, we're able to keep yields up for a lot of those crops that we're working with. Now that our clover platform's been established for a few years, we're hoping that we can put less and less nitrogen on, for example, um, versus our, our control. And we're already seeing organic matter build up. And if we can realise those sorts of gains, that has all kinds of impacts for mitigation of climate change, as you'll know. The key to success is going to be sustainable productivity. If we can help farmers improve their bottom line through technology by supporting what the government policy are and what the consumers want, we're going to, we're going to win. Everybody wins. So we're just doing three points here, but the idea is that the drone will be able to cover a whole field very, very quickly. So we're looking at about five to ten times faster than someone will actually be able to walk to all those points in that field. Rather than the drone flying high and mapping a whole area, which you can do with a satellite anyway, we're using the drone to fly very, very low. So the drone descends to about two, three metres above the ground and takes a photo, and then it moves on to the next point and takes another photo. Those photos are sent straight back to the user's phone, and they can see them on there in real time. So then you can analyse the images, you can send them to an agronomist if you want information from them as well. There's no direct piloting involved. The drone just does it all automatically. Got the images? Yep. So Edwin can now show you the images we've just got from that point. In the future when we have the AI built into the app, the, the AI will then analyse the pictures we've got and will give you the results on, on the side of the field. The agri-food sector, particularly in, on the farm end, is awash with data, but it's very fractured, it's in silos. In order to get the most value for the sector out of that, that data has to be pulled together, and that's the role Agrometrics has. What we've seen with recent political developments is the difficulty in attracting labour to harvest, to manage and process crops, for example. And what we're seeing now is an explosion of interest in autonomous systems in order to solve that problem. And today we've got a couple of examples of exactly that. It's composed by several sensors that allows it to autonomously navigate in the field, a GPS sensor which it has a, a differential unit, there is a base station on the other side. This is a terrestrial embodiment of the technology that was designed to get to Mars. This is the, the Earth version of the, of the <laughs> Mars rover and it quite literally is measuring the Earth. Coming from an academic background we're used to seeing things done in the lab a lot. Um, so it is really nice to see things on farm um, and that it's not science fiction anymore, it's actually happening. About eight or nine years ago, uh, we set up the LED for Crops facility. We've looked at the impact of how modifying the blue, the red, the far red, the green, and the UV within the spectra um, has an influence on the morphology of the plant, so that's how the plant looks, um, the nutritional content, the behaviour of insects. The most recent development at STC is the Vertical Farming Development Centre that has two large growing chambers. Each has around about 120 metres squared of growing space. On the screen here is a farm um, just up the road between here and Annick. And what it allows us to do is identify difference. And then when we go and sit down with the farmer, we can use that sort of information to divide it up into management zones. So you can see on this darker soil, there's actually a lot more plant growth. 
Asset 5 is a series of trailers and mobile laboratory type equipment, um, some of which you'll be seeing here today. So the differences between the sensitive plant and non-target sire system plant is very clear based on the visualization here. This is what the dashboard looks like. It's a client platform. You sign in and this is what you see. A pansy sample came into the clinic. Um, we use classic microscopy and culturing techniques to isolate ramularia. The test system itself consists of 60 units and each unit is 10 metres long and contains 4,000 litres of water. Uh, so it's an automated spore trap um, and we're monitoring the air. Uh, these will be deployed to enhance the visibility that we have and again the foresight that we have. representatives here from Innovate UK, KTN and Bayes alongside the centres themselves. So really do make the most of that opportunity. Together we can maximise productivity, sustainability, health, welfare, food safety and food security. So today is, is very much about showcasing some of the capability within the four innovation centres. And it's also an opportunity to learn a bit more about government's commitment to the industrial strategy. I suppose the way I look at sensor uh, technology, so they translate cow language into human language. They allow the stockman to know what's going on inside the animal. To fully utilise it, we need to have a way of capturing it practically. And I think to me that's what the beef monitor gives us. The animal steps on, puts its head through the tombstone. While it's doing that, the weight's been taken and its ear ID has been read. It marries the weight and the EID together to put that with that animal, it then sends it up to the cloud-based technology. Upside of the beef monitor unit is, it's eliminating the stress in the animal. The animal's freely going onto the unit to be weighed. Right now they're being used to house pigs. We've got four pens in each room. We've got air conditioning systems so we can achieve a lot of individual temperature control if we wanted to give them different types of thermal challenges. We've also got individual feeders so we can feed them all different diets, different pens. We can install microphones for acoustic monitoring if we wanted, even looking at infrared cameras as well. And the room has 100% coverage so you can place the cameras wherever you want. What we have here is a Qualysys gate analysis system with 12 infrared cameras which are mounted around the ceilings. These cameras work by sending out the IR signal which is then reflected back off our markers, which are all winning. Um, and based upon that, on those marker positions, this system can recognise each of those anatomical points. This facility uh, enables us to do lameness scoring from anything down to mice, um, but we use it for anything from lambs and calves right up to large cattle and horses. We have a number of points on Winnie's back, along her head and onto her back, and also on her legs and down to her hooves. So you can see how those points are moving. This technology was born in the motion capture um, video industry and film industry, so this is the kind of thing that the Avengers films uses. This event gives us a great opportunity to bring all sectors of the supply chain together to see a variety of different capabilities, not just the one. So it brings it all together in one place. I suspect that that was the non-dairy and that was the dairy. Uh, which is interesting because I like them more. Once they're here, we load them onto the table and leave the room because of course the scanner works using x-rays. 
once we've got them nice and straight in the cradle, you can see the nice straight spine. We use the bones as landmarks because they don't move about in the body. So here you can see the cross-sectional images. These are five millimetres thick. The darker areas within the muscle here, that's the marbling that you can see. There's computer scientists, there's, there's data analysts, and there's agricultural technologies. And, and I can't think of another venue where you'd actually be able to marry those three things together. As CEO of one of the centres, I'm very grateful for the organisers in bringing this event together and actually provides us with a platform for both industry and academia across the UK to show the value of what we have to offer. And we've made considerable strides in the last year, all the centres have, and it's just great to be able to catch up again on what we're all doing. We've seen lots of great new facilities and capabilities across all the four centres, and I think there's been quite a buzz talking about the excitement in the industry and how innovation is going to help transform food production for the future. So this opportunity to say, look, here's a little, a little snippet of what we do, it kind of stimulates the discussions and that's key to what we do. A fantastic day out there, really good interaction between the delegates and the uh, agri-tech centres, lots of enthusiasm, lots of talking, lots of discussion, you couldn't have asked for more.